What's up? I'm John Schritt. Today, I'm going to review this MSI Ventus 3X 4070TIOC. All right, first things first, let's get this thing out of the box. Now, as you may notice, this is a used card. It came from an online auction. You can see here, Amazon inspected. Would I recommend buying a card this way? Probably not. The risk is, is pretty huge that there's something wrong with the card because you know, someone else has returned it, whether it be coil wine or, or, or an issue. The people that look at these cards and resell them don't test them to the level that they probably should. And you don't get the original receipt either, which could affect your warranty claim. Here is the card. Here, accessories first. Uh, two, a pin power connector adapter. Like I say, don't recommend, I mean, it's fine. Don't recommend using it, but I would rather get, you get a dedicated cable like this. MSI is always good. I'm surprised even in their lower end card with providing a bracket, a support, oop, other than a support bracket. Uh, so, very cool. The card itself, if I missed any accessories, it's cause I didn't get them. So, there's a chance something else came in the box. Sorry, okay. Here is the card, oh gosh, here is, here is the card itself. It's a pretty stylish looking card. I mean, <clears throat> the ports. You will notice there is one HDMI port. And on top, and there's your 12 volt power connector. There is no BIOS switch, so if, if that's something you're looking for, you will not get it in this card. And yeah, I think the only thing is just the single, single HDMI port, which is, is common now with a lower end card. Even the mid-tier ASUS ProArt only comes with one single HDMI port. We will talk about the essential version of this card later that does have two. But here, let's compare, this is a pretty small card, let's compare it directly to uh, the ProArt. Uh, 47 Ti that I just reviewed. If you want to check out that review, you can check it out here. How do they compare in size? I mean, it's literally, I don't even see top view. Uh, when you look at the spec, they are pretty much identical with the ProArt being one to two millimeters thinner, which is cool. We will talk about that later with the Pro Art. But other than that, they are identical in size, which is also very comparable to the Zotac Trinity OC, a very small condensed version of a 4070 Ti. Now, one thing to note, this is the triple fan version. Doot, doot, doot. Uh, that, that's why the 3X is the triple fan. They do have a 2X version. And I mean, I have tested a couple cards, two fan version cards in the past, mainly the Asus dual card, and it worked really well. It was a 3070 and it worked, I'm very surprised at how well it worked, even for thermals in uh, a smaller two fan configuration. So that is an option if you do need a lot less space. This card does not have a vapor chamber, very similar to the Big Brother Gaming X Trio, which people were very disappointed in because the 3000 version did come it, but the 4000 did not. So interesting, you have to move up to the Supreme line to get a vapor chamber. Now, does it make a big difference in thermals? Not a whole lot of difference. So I mentioned the, the thickness thing, which was, was kind of neat. And, and the Pro Art card was, was, it was brought to my attention recently why the, how thin that car is, is so important. Now this here is sitting at 52 millimeters at the 4070 Ti. If you do look at the 4080 version, it jumps up to 68 millimeters. And that's quite a significant amount thicker, which is common for most 4080 cards. Now what's special about that Pro Art card is that the 4070 Ti and the 4080 are the same thickness. They're, they're both 50 mils, which is, which is incredible. They were like kind of action packed that 4080 GPU into that form factor. Now, MSI did just come up with a slim version of their cards uh, for the, the Gaming X Trio line, 
but that still only brought it down to 51 millimeters. B back to this card. Let's toss it into my benchmark system, my uh, 12900KS with 32 gigs of DDR5, 6000 megahertz RAM. It's a, it's a nice, nice little system. Let's see and see how it fits it all packaged within a Corsair 5000 case. Okay, how does it look? I mean, it's pretty, it actually goes really well with the white, kind of the silver and the white. It, it does fit with this somewhat white aesthetic that I have going on here. Uh, note, let's plug this guy in. So there, I mean, something to note, this, this card has zero RGB. You probably knew that, but if you, uh, the, they, they, didn't, they didn't bother. So if RGB is your thing, this may not be the card for you, but I mean, it, uh, yeah, it's on. You can't really tell it's on, but it's on. Let's do some benchmarks. Let me test it through it through the ringer and see really how it compares to some other 4070 TIs. All right, so what is the verdict? Is this card any good for gaming? Yes, 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 absolutely. Here, here, check out the scores uh, with all these different benchmarks. Right, right, not, not bad at all. I mean, considering it's a lower end 4070, it performed even better on, on some scores than other cards. I mean, that's where it's literally sometimes a gamble what card you get. Now, I switched from recently from my ASUS ProArt 4070 TIOC to this card with my day-to-day -day gaming and noticed absolutely zero difference. Speaking of which, I have been playing the season two of Diablo 4. Anybody uh, thoughts to what you think? I'm enjoying it. Yeah, let me, let me know what you think or if you are done with Diablo. Okay, now how well did this card overclock? Now, considering that it was the first card that I've ever tested that did not allow me to increase the power draw at all. Very surprising. Some other cards are, you know, 8%, 20%. 0%. That being said, much like I said, it's a gamble what card you get. I think I may have won the Silicon Lottery on this one because when I overclocked it, it performed better than any other 4070 Ti I have tested. Here's how I did it. Now, I started slow and I increased the core. I usually start with the core first. I was able to get it up well, as soon as I did, but plus 200 megahertz. It crashed. And that, that was that was limp. So I backed it off a bit by 175 megahertz, which actually let the clock sit at 2970 megahertz, which was about 50 megahertz shy of the Gaming X Trio, and matched the ROG Strix non-OC overclocking potential. I assume that the OC version of the Strix probably would have overclocked a bit better. So that was the core itself, but what about the VRAM? Well, I mean, I was able to bring the VRAM, I literally maxed out the slider. I mean, from a power draw, not being able to do it, and then the VRAM literally going to plus 2000 megahertz on the VRAM. It, it, it performed extremely well. Now, when I brought it up that high, it did have some problems with 3D Mark and knowing that it was a 4070 Ti, so I had to back it off a bit. I ended up landing it at plus 1900 megahertz, bringing it up to 12,101 12, megahertz. And the, be the best part was that in the Speedway benchmark test, I scored the highest score that anyone with a 12,900 12, KS and a 4070 Ti has ever scored at 6,116. As I said, Silicon Lottery. I mean, this legacy, sometimes this could happen, but I have noticed that MSI's VRAM has just been, the overclockability of it has been pretty amazing. I noticed the same thing in the Gaming X Trio cards and also on this one. So MSI, I don't know what you're doing differently, I would love to hear more about your VRAM selection and what makes it special. Please reach out. Now you're thinking, okay, this card overclocks well, but the thermals must be junk. No, 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 no. It, it, it performs extremely well. Here, even when fully overclocked, the core maxed out at 73.1 degrees Celsius and the VRAM was at 78 degrees when I was running in the Speedway benchmark. 
Then I said, okay, well, I'll check it out after an hour of gaming with Diablo 4. And it was even less with the core at 71.3 degrees Celsius and the VRAM floating at 74 degrees. Now comparing it to the ProArt 4070 Ti that I just tested, the core temps are very similar, but their VRAM temps, they shot as high as 84 degrees Celsius. So once again, VRAM. The VRAM in these cards is amazing. Now in testing this card, I experienced zero coil wine, which is absolutely lovely. I feel like manufacturers have really upped their game when it comes to coil wine and it's more of a first generation 4000 series issue. But I, th I think they've really realized the problem, probably getting a lot of returns to Amazon. And they said, okay, we need, we need to fix this issue. So yeah, I, I haven't experienced any coil wine uh, for a few cards that I've tested recently. You let me know if you have a more recent card and you're still experiencing coil wine. I'd love to, uh, I'd love to hear about it. Meanwhile, here's what the card sounds like when I increase the fan speeds. It tops out at 66 decibels at 100% fan speed, which is identical to the Asus Pro Art. Okay, how much is this card? Well, I mean, it comes in at $830 of both Newegg and Best Buy. Now, beware, MSI did release recently a new E or Essentials version of this card, which is about $30 cheaper. I'm still trying to figure out the exact difference between the two cards, other than the Essential version has one less display port and one more HDMI port and has reinforce the back plate and doesn't have dual ball bearings on the fans. So, I mean, I'd love to have them side by side to really feel and test the difference. And even from MSI's perspective, why they decided to create this card that's $30 less and yeah, always, always curious about that. Unless you need two HDMI ports, I, I would probably stick with the normal version, uh, but uh, yeah. So back to this card, I mean, it, it's $70 cheaper than the Big Brother Gaming X Trio, but only $20 cheaper than the mid-tier Asus Tough or the Asus Pro Art. For a bare bones card, no RGB or anything really fancy about it, it's still pretty pricey. Now, I mean, it still performs extremely well, so if you don't care about RGB or fancy or, you know, black anodization that comes with the Pro Art, then yeah, this card could be for you. I'll admit, I was extremely surprised with this card. The, the overclock ability just kind of went, oh, and, and it just, it performed really, really well. It, it's, it's a very, very nice card. Now, I, I will note that if you buy this card, you may not get the exact performance that I did, it, it is a bit of a gamble. This is the OC version. Who would I recommend this card for? Well, let's say you just bought a pre-built and it came with this card. I'd be okay with that. I mean, I, it's okay, it's inside the pre-built, you know, whether there's a side panel or not. You just bought the computer because you wanted a nice system that will work and this would be an awesome workhorse card. Who wouldn't I recommend this for? Well, probably anyone who likes RGB. I mean, it doesn't have a BIOS switch, so I wouldn't recommend upgrading the BIOS or flashing it to a Gaming X Trio would be probably not recommended. If it were me, I'd probably spend the extra 70 bucks and get the Gaming X Trio, but you know I'm all about the RGB. But you know where I think it'll work really well? I've been toying with doing an ITX, like a Fractal Terra build, and I think the, given the form factor, it doesn't have any lights, so you won't see it, I think I will keep this card and use it for that build. So stay tuned and I'll, uh, we'll do that build together. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. As always, leave a comment, drop a note if you have any questions or if I missed any details. Stay tuned for the next one.